Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Lloyd Swearinger. I work for Premier Truck Group that's in Salt Lake City, and I work with uh, your team here at night on selling trucks, delivering trucks, and uh, also uh, helping you guys uh, with the fleet. So today we're going to talk about the uh, model year 24 uh, Freightliner Cascadia. The Cascadia traditionally has been our on-highway truck, but it has several different applications that we use in the industry as well. But it's really our, our, our mainstay for the entire Freightliner brand. Uh, what we're looking at today is a, a model uh, 126 Cascadia uh, with a 72-inch raised roof. And basically what that means is the 126 is our back of cab measurement from the front of the bumper. And the 72 inches is how high uh, our roof cap goes from the floor up to the inside. Now, just so we can kind of take a look at what that actually means, uh, bumper to back of cab is 126. And also we have a raised roof Cascadia. It gives you a lot more headroom. Also allows us the ability to have a bunk inside of the truck as well. So just going back to the front of the uh, truck, our trucks uh, for night are standard with the chrome grille, the blacked out fender mirrors, and the blacked out uh, side mirrors as well. You'll notice here um, at the bottom, we have our Detroit Assurance uh, uh, collision mitigation radar. We'll talk a little bit more about the radar and the camera, but wanna let you know that uh, we're fully integrated with the Detroit product on the night uh, side. So we have our Detroit Assurance collision mitigation system, we have our Detroit engine, which is a 455, 1650 uh, pounds of torque engine. We have Detroit front axles rated at 12,000 pounds, and we have uh, Detroit rears at 40,000 pounds as well. You, a couple things that you can kind of tell. What we're really going for with this truck is aerodynamics. Um, as we progress through uh, environmental demands on us as a product manufacturer, we have to take into consideration how we're going to mitigate fuel economy and lower your carbon footprint as well as well as ours. So if you can look at the front of the truck, you can see that we've um, smoothed out every single detail that we can, including closing out the bumper, um, the bumper uh, to the front of the cab on both sides and running all the way back to our fenders. Um, before we leave the front, uh, LED headlights are standard on the Freightliner product. Uh, for us, that's a safety um, um, product, uh, pro uh, a safety option for us. Uh, the LED headlights are, uh, gives you much more visibility than our traditional halogen lights. Uh, they see further and there's a wider spread with the uh, luminescence as well. So it gives the drivers a lot more visibility. Also looking at the Freightliner too, we've gone to a one-piece uh, design windshield. We used to have a two-piece roped-in version. What that does for us is give the driver further visibility as well. We've also sloped the hood down as well. That gives us increased visibility instead of, and so that the driver can look a lot closer to the front of the truck. Um, with that, let's kind of look at the ease of getting into the truck. Uh, we uh, have designed the hood so that any person of any size can pull the hood open with just one hand, just like that. And let's say I'm not the biggest guy, but I can pull the hood open very, very easily. What we see inside the engine, again, is everything that is very, very visible to check our fluids, to check our levels. We have our fuel filter here. You can see the axles down here as well. Uh, that's our DD15, but everything, whether it's coolant, uh, whether it's our oil, we can check very, very easily with, if I get stuck on the side of the road, I can tell very, very easily what's going on. If I come to the other side, you'll see windshield wiper fluid, some of the other, some of the same things, um, air dryers, just everything is very, very easy, accessible. What that does for us too, as a truck um, may potentially go down on the road, our dealership network also can look at a truck very quickly, understand what's going on and uh, be able to uh, fix those trucks a lot more quickly. Uh, so I'll close this guy. Coming around the other side, uh, again, going with the aerodynamic uh, theme here, we put uh, wheel well fender closeouts around the wheels. What again that does for us as airflow comes around it pushes the airflow past the wings and down the side of the truck, increasing aerodynamics. 
We also have uh, aerodynamic fender skirts down here, again, to close the gap between so air doesn't circulate underneath the truck and air flows across the, uh, uh, across the skirt as well. We've closed out the gaps between uh, the cab and the chassis fairings, as well as between the side extenders as well. You can see the shape of the fender pushes out. So as aerodynamics aero uh, flow goes, it pushes out and not to the tandems as well. Two aerodynamic features to uh, also note on the Cascadia. We've gone to our aero um, painted bumper. It always matches the cab. Uh, we don't have any of the air dams on our models over the past couple of years. We've had some issues with uh, air dams breaking off. So we've gone to just the standard with the uh, with the, just a regular aero bumper. Also something new that you'll kind of see in the past couple years are these air wings. Basically what that does is it actually pushes air off the windshield as well. So you have an, an increased uh, aerodynamic flow of the air as the truck goes down the road. Going inside of the truck, Battery uh, fire extinguisher, five pound uh, fire extinguisher is always mounted here on the side of the driver's seat. Def uh, fill is here, fuel fill is on the side. We have uh, left and right hand baggage uh, compartments as well. If I come inside the cab, I have a hook here that can open up the baggage department, whether I need to get uh, any kind of tooling, chains, uh, what have you, I can get access on both sides. It's just extra storage as well. When I go to the back of the cab, very easy to get to all of my air and electrical components on the back of the cab. I have deck plate and steps that can allow me to get right onto the back of the catwalk. Uh, we have Michelin tires on the, on the front with Accuride wheels on this particular model. We do do some um, Alcoas as well, but this one has the Michelin uh, fronts and then the Bridgestone tandems here on the back. And again, we're rated at 12K and 40K here on the rear. Um, Fontaine fifth wheels. We went to Fontaine uh, a couple of years ago as the standard here at night. Uh, actu air actuated from the cab inside. So again, we can release the kingpin when need be. Over the past couple of years, Freightliner has really made a concerted effort to redesign the interior of our truck. Um, what we have here is the new dash that's been in for the past probably three years or so if you're not familiar with the Freightliner product. But essentially what we wanted to do was keep all of the gauges in front of the driver so that there, there's no distraction for the drivers to look on different sides of the, of the truck. So here we'll have our fuel gauges, we'll have our DEF, um, we'll have all the components and, in, and information that the driver is going to need. What's also interesting about is we've redesigned the steering wheel as well. And essentially what we've done is taken the kind of the Apple iPod model and we've decided to put in different directional um, uh, controls that we can control the cluster. Now the cluster is new over the past few years. What we've done is we've condensed the cluster and it's all electric, electronically based. And what it'll do is I, it gives me a lot of information very quickly and again, right here in front of us as, as the driver. Each card does something a little bit different. You see here, here's the home. I can look at my speeds. I can look at different optimized idle adjustments here. I can also diagnose the truck from here inside the, I can diagnose some of my uh, fault codes from here inside the truck. I can control my radio and then some also some different stuff with dash and lights and times, et cetera. So a lot of really cool features just right here in front. And that, again, the whole concern for the driver is not to fade back and forth looking for different controls and different information. It's all right here. One other thing to take a peek at as we talked on the outside of the truck was the increased view that you have here um, right out the side, the, uh, right out front of the truck. Again, we took, we made this a one piece windshield. So we don't have the bar here in front and the, you can tell how sloped the uh, hood is. That way, again, it increases the visibility for the driver. One thing you'll see here too is our camera system for the Detroit Assurance. So Detroit Assurance works with two different phases. You'll have a camera system. You also have a radar system down there and they work together. And again, Detroit Assurance is what we feel is kind of a game changer in the Freightliner product. Fully integrated Detroit product made in Detroit 
Uh, what it does is it gives you, uh, again, collision mitigation. There's a radar detecting objects in front of it, but it also is working with the radar to um, look at lane departures, et cetera, and really reacting to the truck. Since it is fully integrated, that means the engine, the uh, transmission, the axles all work together along with the Detroit Assurance Systems to make it a safer experience for the driver. A couple things about the redesigned dash that we did a couple years ago as well as re redesign this entire thing. Um, two things that we were worry, worried about were, was the accessibility for our service folks on the road to um, get to components quickly. And what that does is mitigate your downtime. And hopefully the Freightliners have um, uh, least they it has less downtime than we have had before in the past essentially this entire top panel of the dash can come off uh, that way uh, service folks can get into the dash quickly uh, can look for components there's wiring harness they can get to HVAC everything very quickly by pulling the dash off and not pulling components out of the front of the dash the other thing that we add is what we call the e-volt the e-volt is a pull out cover that gives us even more access into behind the components here. Also in here is all of my fuses, all of my fuses componentry that I can look at right over the, over the side of the road as well. Again, in our previous models, we used to have a fuse box mounted on the inside of the firewall in the engine. This makes it a lot more easy and a lot more accessible for me as a driver to check the components here. And again, I have, um, I have access to wiring harnesses, uh, even more HVAC here right behind uh, this component. And this will snap in just like that. So as we move to inside of the cab, there's a few different features that we should really talk about. The biggest thing is what we wanted to do was increase the cabinet space here inside the cab. Um, with the redesign, with the redesign of the dash, but also we redesigned the bunk as well, uh, we went to Boeing and actually partnered with Boeing uh, to redesign our cabinets and especially our upper cabinetry. Um, what we feel, and you probably have a feel and a look of what you do when you get onto a flight, is um, excess um, space here and space in, in the cabinets and everything here that you see comes on every single Freightliner that we build. We also have an upper shelf here for extra storage and compartment space. Increased lighting as well. One of the things that we ran into with our last uh, design was everybody felt like our cabs were maybe a little bit too dark. So what we did to mitigate that is we, in, we put LED lights inside the cab for our dome lights and our sleeper cabin lights. So it makes it a lot, lot brighter here inside. If with, every night, with every night truck, we have a uh, space for our microwave and our refrigerator comes standard in the trucks. And we also have a flat screen TV mount uh, that you can uh, mount your TVs here and relax here in the, in, the, in the cab. What we also did inside the new cab is we, each of the night trucks will have a double bunk in them. Um, that way it's accessible for single drivers, but also teams as well. There's a new ladder system to get to the upper bunk as well, which brings out our ladder and comes all the way down to the floor. Now it gives the person up here who's sleeping in the top bunk, uh, easy accessibility to the top bunk, but also kind of keeps all of our componentry uh, kind of together. Because in our last truck, the, the ladder was over here and it took a little bit for, um, our, for the drivers to get into the bunk. So, and again, that goes very simply back into the, back into the cab and snaps right back in just like that. Um, Again, a really good redesign that we did for the, um, for the truck, and we're very, very proud of this interior. So a couple of other options that we should really should talk about in our, um, sleeper, in our sleeper trucks are two things. There is a panic button here. Um, Knight's very, very sensitive, to obviously, to the safety of their drivers. And we're actually interested in making sure that there's an option there available. So if there's ever anything that's a distress or panic situation, there is a panic button, which sounds the the horns and flashes lights and it really allows us to allows people to un, that's not in the truck to understand that there may be a potential dangerous situation 
The other thing too is opt idle. Each one of our trucks are are designed with opt idle in the trucks, and they're designed with comfort mode. So, a couple of things about opt idle. Opt idle is a option that we use to control when trucks idle. There's a couple of different app reasons why we would do that. One, um, better fuel economy, but also the reliability of our components within the truck. So it's temperature driven, but also it's battery driven too. So if our batteries get too low, the truck will cut on to charge the batteries. But necessarily for here, we're talking about um, a temperature. So for here at, at night, uh, the low temperature setting is at 30 degrees. Um, the high temperature is at 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So within that band, the truck won't idle. But outside, the truck will cut on and it'll actually cool the truck down or warm the truck out, down as well. Here in the bunker, there's two different controls. There's one for the blower and there's one for a temperature setting as well. So a couple things to really kind of understand. The blower for opt idle to work, we really do need to have some type of a uh, the blower on, you can kind of hear the truck start to blow up here in the front. For it to really cut on, we really need to have that up, um, not all the way, not blowing all the way, but just really moderately focused. This is our temperature setting control, and it, it's not necessarily cold air versus warm air. What it, it does is it's a different, it's a thermostat. So right here down the lowest setting, um, down here at the bottom of the blue, if you can see the indicator here, um, is about 60 degrees. When we turn it to the middle, it's about 72 degrees. All the way to the end is about 85 degrees. So two keys, and one, two of the biggest questions that we run into um, from drivers is, hey, my opt idle cut out. Typically what happens is either they've got the blower up too high, or you know, if it's a hot day, they have it cranked all the way down to 60. What we recommend, and so what the truck is trying to do is it's trying to cool or warm the truck to those prescribed temperatures. What we typically try to tell, and sometimes if the truck can't get to it, the opt idle will just sh shut down completely. And then we get complaints of why is the opt idle not working? Our suggestion is turn the blower up again, just minor, and then also probably turn it to about 72 degrees. What will happen is the truck will start to cool down. And then from there, you can adjust um, where you want to. But again, opt idle is a great feature. Um, and if done right, can really uh, increase your uh, experience here in the truck. That's our review of the Model Year 24 Freightliner Cascadia. Again, thank you again for your time and reviewing the video. We're extremely happy to be working with you, the drivers, night transportation, and really, really happy about the experience.